There is private and internal APIs everywhere. Every website has one of sorts. APIs help websites function and the end user isn't really supposed to see it. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to manipulate one of those APIs on Best Buy. This will be a series of hopefully many, so let me know if I should make more by liking, subscribing, and letting me know in the comments. Now let's get started. You are going to want an internet browser of your choice. You can choose to get a Chromium-based browser like Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, or Opera, which is what I'll be using for this video. Or you can choose Firefox, but it might have a different UI for the developer console. The second program you're going to want to install is Postman. This program will help you editing the requests you collect from your browser and recreate them for uses in your favorite programming languages, such as Python. Now open your browser of choice and enter in the website you want to analyze. In this video, I'm going through Best Buy. The first thing you want to do once you open Best Buy is open the developer console. The HTTP packets start getting tracked as soon as it is open. To view these requests, you will have to open the network tab inside of the dev console. Once set up, you can start by clicking an item you want information on. I'm going to click on this 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now once I click on it, you will see that a lot of junk pops up in the bottom. You can filter this out by clicking on one of them and pressing Ctrl plus F on your keyboard. This will open a search bar in the left of your console. You can use this to search for everything that is currently on the web page. This can be useful if you're trying to find the request to obtain certain information like, for example, the price for this iPad. As you can see, I searched for the price and have found three separate endpoints to have the price information. And when I click on one, it shows me where the request is located throughout all of this junk and also opens a window with all the information about the iPad Pro, including the price. When you right click on the request, you can then copy the request as curl and make sure it's bash and click it. This way you can import it into Postman to take a closer look at the data. Now that you are in Postman, click the import button and paste your request in the prompt box shown. To get the data again, you can press the send button to request the same data about the iPad Pro. If it worked, it will show the same output that you saw in the browser before. Now that you have the information that you wanted, plus a lot more, you can use this endpoint to put into, for example, Python, and check every 30 seconds for a price reduction, and send a text message or email to alert you. You could even use multiple product IDs from this endpoint and track multiple products. The possibilities are endless and much better than using slow automated browsers like Selenium. You skip the middleman and it's easier and faster for your system. You can save the request in Postman and organize it to your needs when you decide to import different requests. Once you're ready to use the endpoint, you shave off some headers that you won't need. This is good practice to keep what is only essential to the request. For this request, you are going to want to keep the JSON element to the request to make sure you can parse it easily with something like Python. Once you shaved off some headers, make sure that the request still works. For example, the request still needs the X client ID header. Enable it and test again and it's good. Postman has a really neat feature that automatically creates the GET request with all the necessary information to import into any of your favorite programming languages. I am now going to hop over into VS Code and into a Python script to test around with this new code example I have copied from Postman. Now as you can see, it imported requests and it has the URL to the website. It has nothing in the payload, so you don't really need that. So technically you could just delete this. No need for the payload. And in the headers, it shows your cookie, which I doubt you need actually. Uh, X client ID and accept. And these are the headers that we um, shaved off a ton of them. Uh, if we didn't shave them all off, there would have been a lot more in here. There would have been like, it would have taken up so much lines, it would have been annoying. So it's good practice to shave them down. And it puts, it actually sends the requests with 
library, puts it in the response, and it prints it out to the console once you run it. And great. So it looks like what you need to add to the headers is the user agent because Postman inserts its own user agent. Um, Python does not. So you're going to have to go back to Postman and re-enable the user agent and copy it back over. Now it, sh now it works, as you can see. Shows all the data and it's in text form. I think if you do JSON... <clears throat> yep there we go and let's say we want to get the regular price we go and it should print the regular price yep there we go and this could be used in plenty of ways you could have this repeat every let's say 30 seconds so let's code that And in this, you can make it sleep every 30 seconds. Now let's see what it does. All right. So it shows right here the price. And I should have made the time a little lower for time's sake. But let's wait. There we go. Here comes the second request after 30 seconds. I'm going to stop it. Let's say, for example, you want to check if this price ever goes below 1000 Obviously, it's not going to go below the price now, but this is how it would go. Actually, let's save this into a, into a variable called price. And if the price ever gets so if price is less than or equal to a thousand, it will print price reduction, which it isn't because the price probably hasn't gone below one thousand. So yeah, it didn't print anything as you can see, but it's going to check every 30 seconds. It's going to keep going until you stop it. So let's say even if it doesn't go through, we're just going to print the price anyways. So we know that it's working. There's no need for Selenium where it opens up a browser, scans the whole web page, loads it up. I also forgot. need to put this after everything so it doesn't sleep for 30 seconds before printing everything. I want to start immediately. Here we go. There we go. It's not under a thousand, so it doesn't say price reduction. Here, for example, you would put your code for, let's say, sending to whatever your phone number is, yada yada, or sending to email. And yeah, that's where you would, it would do that every 30 seconds. And if it ever gets below that price, Boom. All right. So keep in mind, you don't only have to use the price. You can, let's say, see all of this data. You can look up the SKU ID, which is how we found this in the first place. Um, regular price, the current price. So it looks like it's actually on sale. You can look up the regular price and compare it with the current price. See how much. Uh, your saving see so right here actually total savings so you could use total savings let's say we go over here and do total savings and print that and if the total savings is over greater than or equal to 50 bucks so you're saving 50 bucks print saving and then um there we go now that should work see it was 50 or over 
so it printed now if it was 51 i'm pretty sure it'll stop working because you're not making or you're not saving over 51 bucks yep it only printed the total savings right here and it didn't print the savings have on alert to alert you when things go on sale so you can get your deal before anyone else essentially there are lots of different endpoints that you can explore on many websites if you like the information given in this video, consider giving a like and a comment down below. Also, let me know which websites you would like me to do a deep dive on and showcase the API endpoints. Until next time, peace.